let's talk about the definitive guide to webhooks in Laravel. Let's go. So these days, real-time communication isn't just expected anymore. It's essential. Let's talk about webhooks. They're kind of the unsung heroes of the tech world. So, what are webhooks? Let's find out. Now, I like to imagine webhooks kind of as the digital messengers of the internet. They're powering applications to transmit real-time data to other applications keeping them updated whenever specific events happen that they need to be made aware of, such as a user registered or a payment processed. And they keep your application in sync and they're a pivotal component that ensures other applications are kept in sync to any significant events that they need to care about. So let's talk about implementing webhooks in Laravel. Now, we're going to start with a post request to ingress slash GitHub. And we're going to route that through to the accept GitHub webhooks controller. And we'll give it a name of ingress colon GitHub. Now, when you're adding this webhook, you're going to have the freedom to choose the content type header and the signature that's going to allow you to optimize your request signing. And with this setup, we're ready to accept the request supported by a robust controller to manage all of the action. Uh, but for that added layer of awesomeness, let's include some middleware around this route so that we can enhance the verification of the source and the payload. So let's go add some middleware. What you see here is that we've got a verified GitHub webhook middleware. And what we want to do first off is say, if this request IP is not a valid source, return a new JSON response with a 403. Next, let's grab the signature and secret and just do a quick comparison. Let's say if there's no signature and if the signature is not valid, then again, we're going to return another JSON response with a 403. Finally, we can just root that next controller. Let's have a look at those methods. So, so is valid signature. We're going to take a comparison of hashes where we're going to hash HMAC to SHA256 based off of the payload and the secret. I'm going to compare all of that against the signature. Now there is valid source. What we're going to get here is we can make a request to api.github.com slash meta, and we're going to pull out the hooks property. This will give us a list of IP addresses for a certain period of time that GitHub will be using to send any webhooks. And we're going to cache this with a github colon webhook underscore IPs key. Then we can return a quick ar in array of the IP of the request and the list of valid IPs. And we're gonna add on that true flag so that it's a strict mode. Now we can add that to our root by tagging on the middleware method call, passing in the class name. Our next job is to handle this within the controller. So in our constructor, we are going to inject in the dispatcher contract for Laravel's bus, which is its queue driver. And in the invoke method, we're going to defer a callback to dispatch this background job. And the background job is a new handle GitHub webhook job. Inside the payload, we're just going to pass through request all which will give us an array that we can pass to that job to be handled. Finally, we can return that JSON response with a HTTP accepted, anything within that 200 range. Now, the beauty of this is that we're wrapping it in a defer, which means that it will run this closure once the response has been sent back. So our ingress route is going to be very quick at responding to accepting 
any sort of request from GitHub, for example. And then once that response has been sent, we will then dispatch that background job. But then we want to actually process that payload, right? So let's have a look at that handle GitHub webhook job. Now, the first thing we want to do is pull out the action. And we can do this by just pulling out the action from the payload. And we know that GitHub formats their webhooks in a very specific way. So we can run this match operation over, we can run the match operation over the payload and say, if the action is published, then we want to use this GitHub service class to say release and here's a payload for that. If the action is open, then we want to use the service class and say, okay, open, you run the opened method and here's that payload again. And our default method is going to be a quick log info saying that we got an unhandled webhook action passing through the action into the name and then passing through the payload as context, just so that we can keep a track of these sorts of things. And if you're ingressing your logs anywhere, then you'll start to spot these patterns of, okay, I'm getting a lot of these events coming in. Maybe we can start accepting them as well, or maybe we need clearer guidelines. So let's take a quick look at that GitHub service. And what we're going to do is in our constructor, we would inject the database manager. So the release method, we accept an array as a payload, and then we start a database transaction. And that's where we'll handle any sort of release logic that we care about. And the exact same thing with opened. We would then say this database transaction now handles a PR open logic here whatever we might need to do, trigger off the events that are relevant within our Laravel application. It's important to bear in mind that while we've only covered GitHub in this tutorial, the same principles and processes that we followed can be applied to any webhook that you might want to ingest. And the process is to capture the request in your router. You will then route that through to a controller, typically through a middleware layer. Now, your middleware job will be to validate the source and to validate the payload. Once it's validated, it can move that on to the actual controller. The controller will take that payload and it wants to push it off to a background job to be processed, allowing it to quickly respond without clogging up the queue of any other potential webhooks or requests or anything that might be coming into your API or application. But there is a bit of a twist. So how do we ensure that we're catching all webhooks that we're supposed to? And how can we make sure that you know, GitHub retry sending webhooks if the first attempt stumbles and fails? We've got zero observability at all. We're unaware of what might be slipping through the net. And our, we don't even know what our error ratio looks like other than logging actions that we aren't processing yet. We're not alerted and we remain very much in the dark about any sort of failures. That really does amp up my developer spidey senses. So let's talk about observability and resilience for a second. Now hook deck is what I'd call that ultimate solution for managing webhooks. It allows you to configure, monitor, and observe all webhooks seamlessly in one super powerful platform. There's no more juggling multiple sources and multiple kind of validation middlewares. Hookdeck just simplifies all of that by pre-validating all sources for you. Now you need to kind of reset the signature or retry a webhook then there's loads of smart filters and booting built into the hook deck dashboard. So you can click to retry, you can configure backup strategies or retry strategies. So with what all that boils down to is that with hook deck, you can no longer have to handle this in the background because it's basically your webhook queue already. So it will send and it will retry any webhook deliveries. It will hit multiple targets like your API or even AWS S3. So we can keep a running log in S3 of all webhooks that you received. So that if you then 
wipe your database, you can grab them S3 and retry them. And Hookdeck will verify each webhook sourcing content for you, which is a load off your plate, right? So all you need to do is sit back, accept the HTTP request, maybe grab a coffee and let the magic happen. So the next time that you need to work with webhooks in Laravel, give Hookdeck a try. Trust me, I'm pretty hooked. <laughs>